clipping masks are a very useful tool. And until I started using Affinity Designer, did I really understand how to actually use them and the true power of clipping masks. So today, let's make clipper masks super easy. Like I said, in Photoshop and Illustrator, I never really fully understood how to use clipping masks properly. Not only how to actually make them do what I wanted them to do, but to actually understand why it was doing those things. I basically just used trial and error and it kind of worked out. But in Affinity Designer, it's like a thousand percent easier to understand what's going on as long as you understand a few simple things. So today, let's go through that. Okay, so the first thing to understand with this is how layers are actually viewed. In the layer panel, which will use this bottommost artboard here, ignore the rest for now. The very top of the list is the front of the document and the very bottom of the list is the back of the document. So for example, we have this stack of playing cards here. So with this first one, you can only see number one and you can see that the first layer right at the top is the one with the number one. And when we move this one away, you can see that number two is visible, but none of the other three. And you move that out of the way, you can see number three is visible, number four, and then number five. So all of them are stacked from topmost to bottommost. It's a little bit easier to understand if we go to this one here. So the layers are basically stacked like this. So the very, very top layer is above the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. So it's pretty key to remember for this, but the top most layer is the front of the document and the bottom most layer is the back of the document. So now we can move on to something like this. So we've only got some basic shapes here and we're going to start using some clipping masks. Now the way that you can easily do this in Affinity Designer, so if you know what shape you want to put inside another shape, you literally grab the layer. So let's say we're going to put this diamond inside this rectangle. So we grab the diamond, click and drag, bring it to below below the rectangle but then while holding if we highlight the name of the rectangle you can see on the preview there that the diamond has actually intersected itself and is now inside of the rectangle and then we just simply let go and we have this little arrow here which can show us that the diamond is now nested inside of the rectangle and similarly let's say we wanted to put the circle inside the rectangle again we would click and drag and then highlight the name and you can see the blue line is indented slightly inwards compared to if we put the layer just below the rectangle and let go here the circle will just end up behind the rectangle whereas if we go further inwards and usually if you just highlight the name it's a lot easier you can see the blue line indents slightly like that and it shows that you are therefore clipping into that rectangle now, if we wanted to get a bit more fancy we could actually grab this star place it on top of all of them. Now what we'll try is putting this star inside the circle. So we can drag this, put it inside the square. We click off, you can see the top half of it is cut off. Now if we want to put it inside the circle, highlight the name of the circle, let go, there we go. You can now see that it's inside the circle, but not in the diamond or the rectangle. So if we think of this blue rectangle here like a physical bag, we could put the items on top of the bag like they are here, or we could actually put them inside the bag by making them into clipping masks and now it saves a lot of room. So the bag is the outmost layer and the boundaries and everything inside that bag will conform to those boundaries. So a really practical way of doing something like this or using this is a business card. Now this is a very, very simple business card. But if I wanted to make a design like this, I could recreate this. So I could recreate this diamond shape by let's say using the pen tool and then perfectly aligning myself there, making the diamond shape perfectly aligned with that rectangle and then changing the color of it. So it's perfectly aligned and then dragging these corners down to where it should be. But you can see this is just taking too long. And why would you make things more difficult for yourself? So instead we could have this diamond shape and we literally put it inside the rectangle and below all the text and we've got our shape and it cuts it off exactly where I want it to be. So in essence, it means that you don't have to be so precise with your design. So I could use something like a vector brush and just go across like this and then like that. And now if I grab these two curves and just place it inside the rectangle, I've put my design inside the box and I didn't have to cut anything out and it's just done. So you don't have to be as careful and precise with your designs. You can just fit them inside other things. And a really great example of this is with something like text. We've literally just got some text here and we've got this yellow diamond. If I place this yellow diamond on the text and let's just make it a little bit wider just to prove my point in the layer panel here, if we grab the diamond, place it underneath the text and then indent towards the name of the text and let go. There you go. We've made a clipping mask. So that diamond has clipped itself 
to fit the confines of the text. But you could also put things like images inside text as well. We could put like a picture of Elmo just right there. So it's really useful and it's very, very easy to do in Affinity Designer. Trust me, it's a huge amount easier than it was in Photoshop or Illustrator. And it's a lot easier to understand what you're doing because now we have inside our layer panel, we have our text, which can be expanded and non-expanded, I guess. But we've got everything within that as a clipping mask. And then again, the topmost thing is the most front and the bottommost thing is the further back. So we could put this diamond in front of Elmo and you can now you can't see Elmo at all. Hopefully what we've gone through today has helped you understand clipping masks a little bit more and hopefully made them easier to understand. If there's any other specific features that you want me to go through to try and make super easy, then let me know, drop them in the comments below. As always, all the social links are in the description if you want to follow me on anything. And if you want to learn anything more about Affinity Designer, make sure you check out this video here. As always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.